So glad you could join us here on a Tuesday as we uh, resume our conversation with Rich Nelson of Allendale in McHenry, Illinois. We're going to talk about the report from uh, USDA that's going to be coming out in just a few moments. And I want to get uh, Rich's thoughts on uh, what to think about this report, but also some other things going on around the world. So, Rich, thank you for joining us. Uh, Rich joins us by telephone right now. And, you know, we have all these numbers coming out. And I know you and Mark were talking earlier in the broadcast about uh, some pre-report estimates in this report. I kind of wanted to ask you about the latest information that you have from your sources in Brazil and Argentina as far as how the crop is going. I just saw some new updates this morning where CONAB actually increased their estimates of Brazilian uh, corn and soybean production quite a bit just from last month. That sure is right. And that probably will be this, uh, this next phase of news outside of U.S. planting, which gets this uh, further market attention. And as far as this whole Brazil issue, we do have some uh, dryness up ahead these next few days. They will resume back with some good harvest activity. Uh, and then in a, a rain lined up early next week. The thing we're looking at on this Brazil situation is actually not on the beans so much anymore. It looks like 110 to 111 million tons is a realistic uh, trade estimate. What we're actually looking at is the corn side of things. Uh, corn app suggested only 91.5 million tons for corn, same as USDA last month. But a lot of uh, the private trade suggests maybe numbers 93 to 96 million tons. Okay, I guess another question that remains is actually how much of it has been sold this year compared to on average? Aren't they running a little behind? And this year, I want to say uh, numbers in the past uh, week and a half or so, if I remember right, coming out uh, around this 15% uh, lower than last year. So we are seeing some more resistance, and uh, a lot of these, uh, these Brazilian producers are saying, hey, with our rising in currency price, uh, it's actually offsetting some of our, uh, our domestic, uh, domestic uh, prices here. So we're having some concerns about, uh, about this whole crop as a whole. All right, now let's take a look at our current prices and get everybody updated on the futures trade. So let's start with the corn market right now. On the big board in Chicago, we currently have the May contract a penny higher at 368. We have July up three quarters and 375 and a quarter, and December unchanged at 391 per bushel. So not going anywhere very fast. Uh, let's take a look at the soybean trade right now. And on the soybeans, we currently have made down four and a half. Pressure continuing here, 937 and a quarter. Uh, November now trading three and a quarter lower at 946 and a half. A quick aside here, Rich, on the soybean trade where we have this uh, drop by about four cents below that important 940 benchmark there. Is that uh, bringing up some caution flags to you in the way the soybeans are acting today before the report comes out? It certainly does, and it tells us very clearly that, yes, we're going to have rising stocks on today's numbers from USDA's perspective, but the market is still focused on this long-term issue here of trying to price in this old crop supply issue here, especially with the Brazilian uh, crop size as well. Uh, important for today, this is a new low for the downtrend we're in on soybeans, and it does clear out this next move down in terms of a chart availability. So uh, not uh, not good to see for right now, uh, right now in the day's trade. But with all this bearishness built in, I mean, how bearish of a report can it be and still push the market down, though? I really don't think this is going to be bearish at all on soybeans, to be honest with you. Really? I think we're going to have a, a mild increase in stocks with the trade already understands. But we're still trying to price in the longer uh, longer term issues right now. Now, that's very interesting that you say that. Okay, we'll see how it all turns out here in about 12 minutes. Uh, let's take a look at the wheat trade then and uh, get everybody updated there. Chicago May wheat at the present time on the big board. We're three quarters higher at 429 and a half, so not a big change there. Kansas City wheat on the May contract now trading one tick lower at 425 and a quarter per bushel. And on the Minneapolis spring wheat trade, the May contract down three and a quarter at 516 on the low of the day, I might add. And in the cotton trade on July, we're now trading at uh, 7630 that is down 51 points we'll be back in a moment talking more with rich nelson of allendale about our livestock trade today right after this Thanks again for joining us here on the Market Day Report. I'm Marlon Bowling, and we're talking right now with Rich Nelson of Allendale in McHenry, Illinois. Uh, Rich, as we take a look at our livestock segment here, I just uh, wanted to get your thoughts uh, on the sources that you have access to. Have you heard anything about cash cattle trade yet today or not? As of, uh, as of uh, yet, no. Uh, we have some discussions uh, from some people suggesting maybe some end-of-the-month sales, you know, some of the two- and three-week-out procurement still going on. 
uh, at uh, some good prices, but for the most part, I don't have anything for this, this week's actual uh, cash trade here yet, no. All right, so technically, as we take a look at the, at the cattle market, we've had quite a run here since the uh, middle of last week. Let's take a look at our current board price. Today on the futures on live cattle, here we go with the June contract now going underwater a little bit. Uh, we're down a dime now at 112.20. Uh, so now we're getting down there within about 25 cents of our low of the day. We're off our high by 65. August now uh, down a nickel at 105, or excuse me, 108.55, 20 cents from its low of the day, and the October down 13. So they had been a little bit higher, but now we're uh, a little bit lower on the day. On the feeders, let's switch over there. Right now the May contract is trading at 135.15. That's down 23 cents, and we're off our high, interestingly, by about a dollar and 15 cents now. So that's quite a turnaround in that feeder cattle trade today. Um, it looks like they have turned uh, kind of negative here. August down 20 at 136.98. Uh, with that being said, and the market is overheated as it has been here in recent days, how much downside potential do you see today anyway? You know, for today's discussion, I think we'll have maybe down at, at worst to try and fill that uh, gap on the charts here left from uh, Friday's close. And as far as that goes, that's maybe another 10 to 15 cents lower than today's lows. Uh, so on this one, I don't, see we're gonna, I don't see any major push for today's trade, but certainly once we do get cash going, maybe tomorrow or Thursday, uh, we'll probably see this uh, next uh, hard move down, potentially, depending on the price. Well, the, uh, the cattle charts have looked a lot better than the lean hog charts, that's for sure. And the lean hog charts have sold off uh, for many weeks now, the way it seems. Had a little bit of an uptick uh, yesterday in the hog trade, but uh, today it seemed like the futures were trending lower again. May futures now down 67, uh, 68, 68 per hundred weight right now. So we're off our high by about, oh, uh, 50, 60 cents or so. Uh, June down 46 at uh, 72.82 right now. So on this uh, hog trade, uh, how much downside potential remains, do you think, uh, below this market here? And where do you think support will come in? I think you're looking at only days left before we find support on this market. Uh, in the short term, we've got some still some negative news. This is a tough week for hogs. We've got some slaughter delays here, obviously with the Good Friday and then, of course, uh, uh, Easter coming up ahead. Uh, this Good Friday slaughter cut will be a little more than usual. Uh, Smithfield's largest plant in the nation, Tar Heel, will be down here Friday and Monday uh, for some maintenance. So that gives us a little extra pressure in this short term. But keep in mind, mid-April is usually an inflection point for the industry both in terms of supply and price. So uh, let's get this market uh, pushed down into Monday's expiration of the April futures contract, but on a seasonal basis, it usually gets green from that point on out. All right. Well, Rich, good comments. I appreciate it. As always, good to visit with you, and uh, we look forward to all the USDA data coming out in mere moments, and uh, we'll have a lot to talk about after that. Rich Nelson of Allendale in McHenry, Illinois. What a terrific resource to talk to. I'm going to go and uh, get ready for the numbers to come flooding in. Yeah, you know, in order to buy the time, we're going to talk to another important resource when it comes to fires Sounds before good to me. planting season. All right.